Hello and welcome to your June 16th daily briefing. Today we're going to discuss the second stimulus check and a whole other kind of stimulus proposal that you probably haven't heard of yet. And we have some updated information and insights on the $600 unemployment program. And as a side note, another piece of important news today is the EIDL grant portal is back open. I made an entire video on that topic today because there was just so much to explain about it. So if you're interested in that program or the update slash news there, check out that video. It should answer all of your questions. All right, on to the updates. In second stimulus check news, I wanted to talk briefly about a stimulus proposal that was brought up very recently that hasn't received a whole lot of coverage, the Explore America tax credit. This was brought up by President Trump at a White House roundtable just recently. This proposal is one of the more interesting that I've seen so far. It would give Americans up to $4,000 for vacation expenses for traveling within the United States. This would go towards things like hotels, restaurants, travel, and most tourism related businesses. The tax credit would cover up to 50% of a taxpayer's total vacation expenses up to a total of $4,000. Hey, I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a quick trip after 100 plus days of daily YouTube uploads while working full time at my business, but this doesn't really do anything to help out the millions of unemployed and those who can't even pay for rent this month. This program would obviously have to be paired with other kinds of stimulus programs for direct assistance to those who are actually in need. I mean, I'd personally rather not get a vacation and see more people get stimulus checks. This proposal really isn't made to help out individuals as much as it's a way to help boost the tourism industry as a whole. The US Travel Association said travel spending is down $400 billion in the United States, and that would translate to an economic loss of $910 billion by the end of the year. Now remember, the total GDP of the US in 2019 was just over $21 trillion. So a $900 billion loss equates to just over 4% of the GDP, just in the tourism industries. Those are pretty wild figures. So we could look at this as helping those who are employed in those industries. Travel and tourism actually supports 7.8 million jobs in the US. And of course, this was one of the most hard hit sectors by the pandemic. So by helping out this industry, the tourism industry as a whole, we would in effect help out over 7 million Americans who would then spend more money, which helps out other Americans who work at other businesses who would be receiving more money. Eventually, we would all benefit to some degree from this. But again, this would have to be paired with some other kind of direct stimulus in order to get things working and flowing just a little bit sooner. This reminds me, this proposal reminds me of the education credit stimulus that was proposed just over a month ago. We haven't really heard much about it since. Um, maybe you saw my video on it. I only really mentioned it one time. That proposal was a $4,000 tax credit that would be applied to the learning of any trade, skill, or education through 2021. Now, I think that one was a great idea as millions of Americans will be out searching for work that might not actually be there. So helping people turn this horrible situation of losing their job at no fault of their own into a positive with more training and then ultimately higher pay and hopefully a higher quality of living is a good plan in the long run. But either way, I think it's important to bring up all the proposals to ensure, you know, I know this isn't going to help everyone out directly. But I think it's important to bring up all these proposals so that you guys are all as informed as possible on what may happen next, the, the smaller things that may be included within bills. So what do you think about the Explore America tax credit and the education tax credit? Should legislators not even bother with these things or should they be combined with other programs all within one larger all-encompassing bill? No matter what the proposals are on the table, the most debated items are the stimulus checks, state and local funding, um, business liability, and of course the $600 unemployment. So let's get into some more unemployment news where we have some real interesting updates. 
What to do about the additional $600 unemployment has been hotly debated for weeks now, with one side saying that $600 creates a disincentive to work and we need to find alternate solutions, and then the other side saying that we should sustain the $600 level until we're out in the free and clear with this pandemic. However, that's insanely expensive to the deficit, and usually the best plans are something meeting in the middle. So there's been some thought put into changing the additional unemployment to a percentage of previous wages, and a point has been brought up refuting this idea that I hadn't thought of, and I thought it was interesting enough to present to all of you. So to explain this, let's go over why they chose $600 in the first place. This number was chosen because it would replace wages for the average working American. The average state unemployment benefit is $378 a week. Well, the average working American makes $933 a week. That's a difference of $555. Now you round that up to the nearest whole hundred and you get $600 per week additional benefit. So it was a very simple equation to get the average benefit out to the greatest number of people as quickly as possible and allow people to stay home and not get sick while the pandemic was very uncertain in the first early days where we really had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. There's still a lot up in the air, but it was worse a few months ago. And yes, by default, half of the people would receive more than their previous wage and half the people would receive less than their previous wage, but speed was a priority here, as was you know, the issue with just about every stimulus program that we've had. All the issues are pretty much due to the fact that they wanted to get things out as quickly as possible. That's why we see so many problems with like the EIDL grants, with the stimulus checks, and it took months for people to receive them, and a lot of people still haven't yet. It's all pretty much due to speed and systems not really being able to get put in place 100% effectively before sending things out. So going back to changing the $600 payment to a percentage of previous wages, this makes sense on paper. You know, give people 80, 90% of previous wages and they'll at least be able to get by, not easily, but there will be an incentive to still try and find work. So you can probably pay your bills, but you still are probably gonna want a job because you could make more at a job. However, the point that I didn't think about is that unemployment offices can't handle that additional workload of calculating percentages. Unemployment offices are already maxed out with more claims in a few months than they normally receive in several years combined. If the additional benefit was based on a percentage of wages, unemployment offices would have to verify wages for every single person of the millions of people receiving PUA and then calculate the portion of, that the federal government will pay under PUA. This added layer of complexity would take months to get the program up and running when PUA expires in about six weeks and there's not even a set vote yet on what to do. So there's just no way that could be facilitated in time. The Deputy Commissioner of Alaska's Department of Labor and Workforce said that these changes would take them six to nine months to implement. I mean, who knows what's gonna be happening six to nine months from now. All we know is a solution needs to be made that can be implemented basically the day after PUA expires, July 31st. So something simple is gonna to have to be put in place. So now we can use logic to kind of surmise what may happen with this program. Odds are the program will not be reduced to zero additional benefit. Odds are the program will not stay at $600 a week. We know that going percentage base will be far too complicated to implement quickly. So that leaves us with a flat rate amount combined with potentially incentives to return to work. A flat rate could be something smaller, you know, like $300 a week. Or even a better solution that I haven't seen proposed would be doing something like doubling each state's unemployment amount. Let's say Mississippi gets $250 a week, they'd get $500 benefit total because an additional $250 through PUA. And every state would vary just a little bit. This would work better because a state's unemployment amount is based at least partly upon the average wages in that state, which vary wildly from state to state. This would bypass 
the individual verification of income needed, which would make the entire system a little bit more efficient. Yes, it wouldn't be totally fair because people in one state would make more than people in other states, but it's based on the cost of living. So hopefully it would be a slightly better solution. I mean, that hasn't been proposed. I just think that'd be an idea that could work better than other ideas at least. The incentive that's currently being floated around the most is the $450 a week return to work bonus. I've gone into depth on this already, so I won't repeat myself too much here, but it basically would give people returning to work additional pay to incentivize them from leaving unemployment, going back to work. It costs taxpayers 25% less than it does to pay $600 a week, and we'd get the productivity of people returning back to work. So that's all I have for today. I'd just like to take a second and thank each and every one of you who tune in on a daily basis. I see your comments and I appreciate you. I swear I have one of the nicest comment sections on YouTube that I've ever seen. Anyways, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.